but we are starting. So for the benefit of those uh, that will be following along, uh, this is the Alpha DS uh, book club. So today we'll be looking at uh, chapter 22 of the book, uh, which is about databases. So um, for the learning objective, uh, we are going to learn the basics of the database interface uh, package because uh, the DBI package is a package that help us uh, communicate uh, with a remote database all uh, within R. Then we are also going to learn how we can use uh, the DBPly DB package. Uh, we are going to see how we can use it uh, to translate uh, our DBPly code into uh, SQL, which is a uh, structure uh, query language. So we don't need to learn more about we can just write our default dplyr code, then the dplyr is going to translate uh, those code back uh, to, to the SQL uh, syntax. Okay, so like uh, for the prerequisites uh, for us to go through this chapter, uh, we are going to be using the DBI package. We are also going to, uh, which is going to form the interface for us to uh, establish a connection uh, with the remote uh, database. So we are also going to be using the dbplyr package. The, uh, the main job of this package is to help us translate uh, our dplyr code back to the equivalent of structure query language. Um, we are also going to be using uh, the tidyverse uh, package. So uh, the first uh, part of the uh, chapter, this, the first part talks about uh, the database, uh, the basics of every database in which uh, we are working uh, with. Uh, with our, it goes into a brief uh, uh, introduction that, that a database has to do with what a collections uh, of, of data frames called tables uh, in, in database terminology. So these uh, data, they are stored in, in different uh, tables uh, like our default uh, data frame. So, but it, the books also goes into talking about uh, the three uh, differences between a data frame, which is our normal data frame we have been working with in R, and a database table. That, and they say that the database tables are stored on disks. So when we are working with the data, uh, uh, data table, so we have tables, we can have table that goes that, that is very large in which our default R cannot load it. So this is always, we always store this data in disks. Why that of a data, data frame is always stored in memory. So that is the two difference between working with a database and also working with data in memory, which is in our memory. You know, at times we might have some certain data we want to work it with. We see it in R once we load it into R, it can take almost the entire space in which uh, the uh, functionality it will go slow. So it's always good we use the database where we can do all, all those query before we load it uh, into memory. So the second uh, part is said the database table almost always have indexes. So they have index. So all those data that are stored uh, in remote uh, database, they always index. And we can index by those position, which are much like the index of a book. But a database index makes uh, it makes it possible to quickly find rows of interest. Maybe we have, might be interested in specific rows uh, of a data. Then we can make filter. We can just pass that index, uh, and we are going to get back uh, that specific rows of data in which we are interested in. But unlike the data frames and tables, they don't have index. So, but a data table do, which is one of the reasons that they are so fast. So that is why it's very easy for us to call data in the data table because of the index position, because we can specify uh, within this index, okay, this is a specific data I'm looking for. So that process, the iterative process is, uh, is faster for us to uh, get our output, but looking at our default data frame or tables, there is no index. So that is why uh, the process is always uh, is always uh, very uh, slow uh, in response. 
but they also say that most uh, classical databases are optimized, rapidly collecting data, not analyzing existing data. So most, mostly when we are working with a database, we know that we only we use the, those database to store all our data and those data in which we are storing uh, in those database, I think they are going to be indexed. And the process of recalling those data that are, because we can specify, oh, we are interested in this specific data, so we can easily query uh, the database and uh, and get and get the output. And the process uh, becomes uh, very fast because we are not using the 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 memory of our system. The only interest we have, the data is already stored in disks, which is not in the memory of R. So the the process uh, is going to run uh, fast. So the next part we are going to begin see how we can establish connection uh, with a specific database, how we can begin to call query to call data from those database uh, uh, in R. So that is what we'll be looking at. So we need to, we'll be looking at how we can establish a connection to a database. But before I go into that, there are several uh, databases uh, in which we have, we can have the, the R Postgres, we can ask the uh, uh, database management system, we can have the R Postgres, uh, post, which is for the Postgres, we can have the R MariaDB, which is used to query data from the my, my SQL, uh, my SQL, because my SQL is, uh, is a database uh, where we can uh, store data, but we can use this R my MariaDB uh, to communicate uh, with this uh, database. So for here, for this example, I'm using the DocDB package. Uh, the DocDB, I'm using it to, uh, create a connection and I'm using a function that is coming from the database interface. So I'm calling that function uh, from my namespace, which is a database connect to establish the connection uh, for the drive is docdb, docdb without specifying any other arguments. So I'm going to, once we establish this, we are assigning it the output into an object uh, called Connect, so it's for us to establish uh, the connection. But also, if we are working in a specific project and we want to make use of this same syntax, we can also we can specify the directory where we want to establish as a database. For for this example, I use docdb as the uh, uh, as the uh, database uh, directory where. I want to establish uh, this uh, use to establish uh, uh, this connection. So the connection is called con. So because so how do we write data once we have established our connection our connection into the database? So we need to write data from R to the database. So how do we do that? So we are going to use database write table because we want to write we want to write specific table uh, to the database. So once we use the database write table, we need to call the connection that we have established because the connection in which we have already established uh, to the database is called CON. This is a connection. So we need to, the name of the data that we want to write, uh, we need to call that data as a string which is MPG, because this MPG, this is the data set is coming uh, from ggplot2. I am calling it within my namespace, MPG. So the name of the data that will save in, the, in this connect, I want the name to be MPG. Maybe if I have any other specific name in which I want to name that data, I can just put it there uh, within string. So uh, the second data set in which I want to write to the, so the connection is called diamonds, okay? And this diamond is also from uh, ggplot2. So once I execute uh, these uh, two lines in R, this is going to write these two data sets. It's, it's going to be written 
um, to the database, which is our connect uh, database. As uh, so, the next thing, the next uh, step for us after we have established a connection to the database, uh, we have written two data sets, which is diamonds and MPG. We have written them uh, to the database. Uh, the next thing in which they do discuss uh, in the book is that how do we know the list of data sets in which we have now in our database? So if for that case, we'll be using a new function called DB list tables. DB list tables is coming from the DBI package database interface package. So we only need to pass in the name of that connection in which we create uh, earlier on. So when we pass in uh, the name of that connection, it's going to show us that we have two data sets, which is diamonds and MPG. So it's going to show us that we have these two data sets in, in our database. So the next thing for us to do now is that we know that we have these two data sets is for us to start our process uh, of data wrangling. We start our data wrangling. So we call our connect and then we use DB read table. So DB read table is going to read in that table from the database. So uh, which table do I want to read from this database is called diamonds. But there's one thing here, this table in which we are working with, this table, we have not loaded this table to the memory of R. It's still in the database. We are still doing our data wrangling, but we have not loaded, we have not loaded this data into the memory of R, but we are still we are still operating. The data is still in the remote server called phone that we have established. So, but we are still doing our data wrangling process. So once we read this data in, and then we convert that data to a table. That is why I use as underscore table. So once I use as underscore table, it shows that a table of 53,940 rows of 10 columns. So it just shows us all this information, which prints very nice uh, to our country. So, and for us to see the SQL syntax, to do this using a SQL syntax. So this is how we do, we create this uh, object called SQL. Okay, so with, within there we have select, what do we want to select? We want to select carrots from the diamonds. We want to select cuts. We want to select clarity. We want to select color. We want to select price from where? From diamonds data sets. We want to select all those columns from the diamond data set. The condition we want to specify is where price is greater than 15,000. So that is a condition and I assign the all this into SQL. Then I come down to my function. I'm using the as underscore table function. Then I'm using the DB get query to get the query. DB gets query. I pass in the connection. Then I pass in this argument, this SQL argument that I define above. So once I pass in this, it's going to return a table back. It's going to return a table back with all the necessary outputs uh, in which, based on what we specify uh, above in this, uh, in, this uh, in this condition where I say price should be greater than 15,000. I don't know if there are any comments uh, or on this before we proceed. No, that's fine, thank you. Okay, so, so we have seen how to create a connection, uh, how to establish connection, how to write data. Then we have seen how we can do some query uh, from the data within the database. But all this I'm doing the data is still in the database. We have not loaded it in yet uh, to the memory of R. So now we want to use uh, the DB plier, uh, DB plier, this package is mainly, is going to mainly help us uh, to translate uh, this uh, SQL code into uh, the D, uh, D plier code into the SQL syntax. So what we did here, we have 
diamonds underscore db is a new object I'm creating. I, I'm using the table function because I want, I want to query for a specific table and this table is in where the database. Then I pass in my connection to the database that I've established. Then which uh, data in which I want to retrieve, I want to retrieve diamonds. So when I call the diamonds DB, it shows source, it's a table. The name of the table is diamonds, gave us some information about the number of rows and the number of columns. And it shows that this data lives where? It shows that this data is lives in the database and we were able to establish connection using DocDB. And it also gave us uh, the version of DocDB, which is 0.5.1. Then it shows, uh, the further shows uh, the system information that is Windows 10. Uh, if, uh, Windows 10, it shows also my version of R. It shows that this data was loaded in the memory. Okay. So the next uh, for us to do is that I now have this diamond DB that I've created these objects above. And then I want to filter where we have price is greater than 15,000. And then I, I want to select carats from it within carats uh, to clarity and also price. Then I assign this to a new object called big diamonds uh, DB. So when I call big diamond DB, it's going to show us that this big uh, diamond DB, this object still lives here in the database, still show us that. It shows that we are using a SQL uh, syntax. We are using SQL to query because we are running SQL query. But for us to see the alternative code, because we are using the DB player for us to translate uh, this code uh, to SQL syntax. So we only pass in the object, which is big diamonds uh, DB. And then I say show query. This last function of show query is going to give us a SQL uh, query. It shows that we have select, what are we selecting? We are selecting carrots, cut, color, clarity, and price from where? From the diamonds that are set. The condition is where price is greater than uh, 15,000. So that is the code in which we run earlier on. This is the dplyr code. This is the dplyr code. Then this is the, this is a SQL. This is a SQL. Uh, this is a SQL to that dplyr code in which I wrote above. Then to get all the data back into memory, because all this why we have been working with data, this data is still in the disk or in, the, in our disk is not loaded yet into the memory of R. So in order for me to bring uh, this data into the memory of R so that I can use it into, for further analysis, I just need to use uh, the big diamonds at DB and then I just say collect. So once I do this collect, this collect will grab all these data sets in the database, then it will load it into memory and it's going to save it in the object called big diamond. So when I call big diamond, it shows that this is a table. It shows uh, that that is a table uh, that uh, we are working with. Okay, so, okay, so this is about uh, SQL. So it's also very easy for us to load data from the, uh, to load copy data from the NYC flight 13 to our database. So we have our DB player. We are calling this copy NYC flight 13 uh, from our namespace. We are, and we are want to copy all this data to the connection in which I established in the first part. So it's going to show it's creating tables, airlines, airports, flights, planes, is writing all this table to the database and also weather. So it's going to write one, two, three, four, five, and five, these five data sets is going to write these five data set to our connection that we have established. So in order for me to get 
the flight data, I just need to use the TBL. TBL stands for table because I want to get a table back. I pass in the connection and I call flights. Then for planes, table, connection, and also planes. So this is going to retrieve the flights and also uh, the planes from the connection that we have from, from, our, connect to, from our connection. It's going to retrieve uh, those two data sets. For those two data sets have not been loaded. If I want to load those two data sets, it's just for me to add another pipe and I say collect. So once I say collect, it will load it into uh, memory. So for the SQL part of that, so we can just say flights. This is our flight data set. We just say show query. So when we say show query for flights, it's going to show this is the SQL code. It's going to be select. Asterisk means that select what? Everything that we have from flights. Select all the column that we have from flights. So that is what these asterisks uh, stand for. Then here we have planes and then show query. So show query is going to show select as the, all the columns from here, from the planes uh, data set. Then they say where and ordered control, which rows are included and how they are ordered. So how do we do that? We can have this data set, we have flights, and then we say filter destination is equals to IAH, arrange, departure delay, and then when we show the query, so it's going to show that how the ordering is going to change uh, the ordering of this code, because here we say filter, where destination is equals to IAH, but here it says select, select is selecting all the column from where, from flights. So where, where, which is like our filter here in DeepLyR, where destination is equals to IAH. Then it now say order by departure delay. Why here we are arranging by departure delay. So do, this is a this is a deep layer code. Then this is a, the uh, the SQL syntax of that code. If you want to write it in SQL, so this is this is how it's going to be written in SQL. Then this is how it's going to be written using. Dipla, we, can, we have seen how the DBPLA package, it has helped us to understand what is going on at the, in the SQL syntax. So here, yeah, this other one, we have flights, and then we are grouping by destination, and then we summarize when we have a departure delay, where we have mean of departure delay, removing all the missing data, and then we show the query. So this is a SQL. Uh, syntax, which says select destination. Then I have average uh, departure delay as departure delay. Because here we didn't summarize, we are renaming the column to departure delay. So here they now say average departure delay because we say mean departure delay. Then as, because we rename this column here, we are using departure delay, then it's using this as departure delay. You can see how uh, the deep layer, it changed the ordering of the code. Then all this is from the flight data set. But here we call in the data, then it's not grouping by destination. Then this one group by destination. So we, we can see that uh, the SQL syntax change the ordering in which, uh, in which the code looks, but the, the two code, they are going to give you the same result. If you run this using SQL, or you run this uh, using our normal deep layer syntax, uh, we are going to get, uh, we are going to get uh, the, same, the same output. So I will stop there. I don't know if there are comments before we proceed. Understood. OK, thank you.
So the next one is about uh, is about select because we all know we want to see how this works using uh, using the BB flyer. So here we are having uh, the planes, and then we select we select this uh, we select these five columns, and then we use show query. So this one is going to be select tail number type uh, manufacturer model year. Where are we selecting it from? From plates. So this is the SQL. This is uh, this is the code how it looks in dplyr. So once but once we interpret it using dbplyr, it helps us to interpret it to show us the structured query language. So it should, this is the same code. I'm coming. So. So this one we have uh, we have uh, blends, and then we are selecting tail number, type, manufacturer, model, and year, and then we want to relocate uh, manufacturer. We want to relocate manufacturer and mod and and model before uh, this should all happen before the type before the type column, and then we now say okay. Show us all the query. Show us all the query. So from here, when we look at the SQL uh, output, so it shows that we are selecting tail number, manufacturer, model, type, and year. Where are we selecting this from? Is from uh, is from is from planes. But in SQL, in the SQL parts. They did not show the implementation of this. I don't know, but in DeepLayer, DeepLayer, we have been able to relocate this column. We have been able to relocate manufacturer model should come before type. So, but SQL, he has done everything within the select. You know, it has been able to, uh, it has been able to implement this uh, between the select. So, he just say select tail number manufacturer because we say well, let these two columns come before type. So in now place them in here, tail number uh, um, manufacturer, we call we are relocating manufacturer and model, they should all come before type. So we have manufacturer, we have model before we now have type. So SQL, as uh, uh, simplify that code is you just use within select you arrange the ordering of those columns and then say they are this is coming from the planes uh from the planes uh data set so why in deep layer, we we are writing planes we select the column we do our relocation of column just based on the ordering based on what uh we want uh the code to do but when we look at the sql syntax this is how uh, it has been implemented. So in the next part, so we want to see how, how the sub uh, queries, how sub queries is going to help us uh, during the data wrangling uh, process using SQL. So here we are having a column called flights. And then we use the mutates from Dipla to create a new column called year one which is equals to year plus one, then year two, which will be year one also plus one. And then when we show, when we show uh, the query, it shows that we select, what are we selecting? We are selecting all the column, okay? But we have year one plus, year one plus what? year one plus one as year two, because we still modify, we still modify year two because year two is addition of year one plus one. So SQL was able to capture that in this line. It just say year one plus, because we are having year one plus one as year two. So SQL was able to capture that here. Then it now say from, it's now from, from the from argument, we say select all the column. Here we are having year plus 
one as year one. Then from all this, I'm so sorry. All this is coming from, uh, all this is coming from, is coming from the, is coming from the flights data set. So once SQL was able to split this into what different uh, lines. So all this, all this is now coming uh, from the fl flight data set. But the ordering, uh, there is a slight uh, difference uh, within the ordering based on how they implement uh, this uh, in the book. Okay, so they also discuss about joins. You know, in previous uh, discussion, we have looked at the two uh, different type of joins that we have, the mutating joins and the filtering joins. But they also say that if we are familiar with those two, uh, the mutating join, the left join, the right join, the inner join, the same thing work with the SQL. So we can have flights. This flight is already in our database that we have created. And then we say left join, we want to connect these two data by planes. And then we can rename a column call here. We want it to be year belt. And we are joining by tail number because within these two tables, uh, within these two tables, there's one table that connects the two of them. That, that is tail number. So we can join uh, by tail number. And then we call SQL to show us the query, the SQL codes using the DB player to translate this code uh, to give us a SQL equivalent. So this shows that we are selecting uh, all the columns that we can find uh, within flights. We also select the year and we rename the year to be year belt. Then we have type, we have a uh, manufacturer, we have a uh, model, we have engines, we have seats, we have speed, we have engine. All this is coming from which data set is coming from, is coming from the flights, from flight data sets. And then we are now doing what we call the left join by, we are doing the left join. We want to join by the planes on flights.tail number, which is planes.tail number because we are joining by we are joining by tail number we are joining by tail because within flights and planes we are we have a column called uh, tail number this shows that this is coming from the flights and this is coming from the plane so which is clear shows that within this two table perform this join so you can see that if we are used to this this is how it's done. If you are, we know how to do this uh, using the deep layer. The same thing can be implemented when we are working uh, with our data that is in the database. So we can do all our wrangling with based on what uh, they discuss uh, in the chapter. So we can do the same uh, data wrangling uh, even as it is being stored uh, in database. So. They also discuss that there are several other verbs in which we have in deep layer, like the distinct, the slice, the intersect, the pivot wider, pivot longer. So, but all these other verbs, all these other verbs, they also have their SQL uh, queries in which we can, in which, in which we can still, uh, we can still. We can still explore about them. I think this link, this link shows us uh, shows us some. It shows us some. Uh, I also let me also put the DB player cheat sheets. It was very useful when I was going through uh, the chapter. This link uh, shows uh, it shows some of other good uh, references on how we can use uh, several 
uh, Dipla syntax, how we can uh, translate them uh, to the SQL alternative. So these other ones, just this part talk about uh, functional function translation. So how we can uh, translate our function in which we are building back to the Dipla equivalent. So here we are having summarized query, which is a function. And this function takes an input called DF, and it can take several other arguments, which we are use the dot, 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 which indicates that the function we are creating, can re, it can accept several other arguments. OK, so we have our curly brace. So here we have calling the DF, and then we say summarize. Mm -hmm. Within the summarize, we are using the dot, dot, dots, means that we can pass in several argument within summarize, and then we say show, uh, show query. Then here we are having mutate query, which is a function, it's going to take a DF, dot, okay. dot, dot, then we call the DF, and then mutate, dot, 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 keep to be none, and then we show, we show the query. So once we have done this, this is a function we have, uh, we have built. We have built this function, we call it summarize query to query a certain object for uh, summarize. So here we are having flights that are now. We are now grouping by year, month, and day. And then we call our summarize query, which is the function in which we have built already. So Within this summarize our query, we say mean should be mean of what arrival delay na.rm equals true. Then we have median should be median of arrival delay na.rm equals true. So once we execute uh, this line, it's going to show us the SQL side. It says select, we are selecting year, months, day. Then we have average of arrival delay, which is as mean. Then we have percentile counts, which is 0 0.5 within group ordered by arrival delay as median. Because here we have specified that we are, we are also interested uh, in the median. So, but all this is coming from the flight uh, data set. It's coming from the flight. Then we group by year, month, and day. Because if you look at above, uh, we also group, we also group, we also group the data by year, month, day. So and it also showed us that we are grouping by by year, by month, and also by day. But we also do this diff another example uh, where they use flights. They are grouping by year, month, day, and then they mutate, they mutate a query where we have mean, mean of arrival delay, NA or RM equals true because here we are using summarized query. This is for mutate query. So this shows that we are selecting, uh, it shows we are selecting year, month, and also day. Then we have average, which is arrival delay over partition by year, month, and day as mean. And all this is coming from the flight, uh, from the flight uh, data set. So what is this doing? This is using just to show how we can do the similar using the mutate query that we have created in our function. We have a group by, we have a range by time hour, and then we, we call our function in which we have created earlier on. So this is going to translate uh, the same, it's going to translate uh, the same code. It's going to show that this is a SQL. It shows that we are selecting a destination. We have lead of arrival delay one, which is null over partition by destination order by time in hour as lead. Then we have lag arrival delay one and null over partition by time in hour as lag. 
Then all this is coming from flights. Then we say order by time and hour. Then this other part is for me to just, uh, since initial on, I have established a connection between R and the database. So at the end of my data wrangling process, I need to disconnect from the database so that I will come back to my default uh, R session so that I can do my work. So what I did there, I said DBI, DB disconnects, disconnect what, they connect, then I said shut down to be true to so that it will uh, disconnect uh, that uh, what I have established in this beginning so that I will now come back uh, to my fresh uh, uh, R, uh, session. Okay, so I think uh, that is that which we have. So we have seen what we learned today, what we learned today. Uh, we have seen how we can query uh, data that is stored in database, how we can establish connection with those database, how we can uh, write data to the database, how we can use data that is in database, how we can do our data wrangling step, how we can load it into memory, how we can uh, translate uh, all those code using dbplyr to show the SQL syntax of that code. So, uh, but, but for us to be very more efficient, they do recommend that we, sh we should all look into other resources because we cannot just uh, learn just this, what we learn in the book is just like uh, is just like the basics of structured query language. But they do recommend this two link I am posting SQL for data scientists. SQL for data scientists uh, is, is, uh, is an introduction to SQL designed specifically for the needs of data scientists and include examples of a sort of highly Inter interconnected data you are likely to encounter in real organizations. So they also recommend they also recommend a practical SQL. Is it is written by Anthony DeBros is written from perspective of a data scientist, of a data journalist, a data scientist specialized in telling compelling stories and goes into more detail about getting getting your data in a database and running your own database uh, management uh, systems. So I think uh, that is all I have uh, for the chapter. I think the next is just the, uh, the YouTube video. I don't know if uh, there are any comments. So I just post in the chat so that, I don't know if there are any comments. No, I, th I think that, that's all good. Thank you, all your family. And yeah, I've got those links, so that's great. Okay. So I just posted stop so that if John is editing the video, he will know where we started from and also where we ended. So I thank you all uh, for attending the session today. I think uh, we will meet uh, the same time uh, next week for another chapter. We, we are going to explore uh, how we will use the arrow package uh, to also do the same similar syntax of what uh, we what we saw of what we saw today. We will see how we can use another package and also uh, communicate uh, with data. So I think I will be we will be all looking for, I will be looking forward to seeing everyone uh, next week. Thank you all for joining today. Thank you very much. Cheerio, bye. Yeah.